You don't need to be very creative. If you look at these names, we'll go one by one. Amazon oversupply looks absolutely great. ZM that we just talked about, reclaim the five day moving average looks absolutely great. Facebook, again, second day in a row. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Hope everybody had uh, a great day. So, uh, Groundhog's Day, right? Uh, great movie, if you guys remember, old enough to remember, uh, in the 80s, uh, starring Bill Murray. He was, uh, I think it was a newsman, a weatherman, something like that. Okay, I haven't watched it in such a long time, but e he kept on replaying the same day over and over again, right? Uh, if you go back to yesterday, we had a, a pretty aggressive pull, okay? Uh, if you look, look at, let me just show you on the five minute chart, just kind of, so this was, this was yesterday, right? We had this really, really aggressive pull, okay? Really, really aggressive pull towards the end of the day. And a lot of the names that were very, very strong that really reclaimed a lot of big levels yesterday, they got pulled down. And the news was that, again, they couldn't, find a, a, a measuring stick, kind of a, a place that they could figure out, is the stimulus thing on? Is the stimulus thing off? What's the common ground? What are some of the uh, concessions that both sides can make? And the future started really getting aggressive to the downside. And when you woke up this morning, we got a big gap up, right? Everything gapped up basically to pre-headline uh, levels. And last, you know, last night in the video, I kept on talking about that the morning is your window. It's not even just talking about it. the morning, uh, not even talking about just one day. I've been talking about this for years. The morning session, you got three, three and a half hours to do what you got to do. The afternoon session, again, uh, like we talked about in last night's video, is always going to open you up to more exposure for any type of thousand different headlines, whether it's COVID, uh, election, uh, stimulus, anything. Okay, so you're, you're, you're much more in the line of fire in the afternoon. That's why, again, when you see headlines, uh, they're, you know, they, they could really do a lot of damage. And again, most traders, they don't give back their whole day in the morning. They give back their whole day uh, in the afternoon. So today was kind of Groundhog's Day. We woke up, the market was very, very strong. Uh, this is now day four, right? Day four above the supply zone that we've been talking about nonstop for three, four days, how important it is or it was for the bulls to stay above and keep on building, as you can see by the charts. They keep on building. But more important, uh, what we saw yesterday with that really aggressive pull, we got exactly, basically the same headline today. If you look at the five minute chart, you'll see exactly the same headline, pretty much at the same time, pulled down the market, everything went red, but this time it was different. And again, this is where you see where really the power of bias and the power of sentiment lies right now. The bulls could have you know, played uh, a part two, right? A part two for yesterday's sell-off into the close. Instead, they did not roll over. They did not die. They reclaimed and they closed pretty much, at least on the NASDAQ composite, we pretty much closed at the high of the day. More important than that, okay, from the sentiment point of view, if you look at the, if you look at the pull, the names did not sell off, right? Amazon yesterday had a $70 sell-off. Today, right, same, same time, it came in about $10 and then reclaimed supply and went higher. Netflix, again, yesterday got murdered, right? Absolutely murdered today, right? They came in, went absolutely nuts. And you could go down the whole list, right? Literally, Apple, uh, NVIDIA, you know, anything, you know, uh, any stock you want that's in the beta names, uh, you could clearly see the difference between yesterday and today. And if you look at where we are from the point of number one, common sense, and number two, technical analysis, you see where their next measure potential is, right? Again, we see it. The last little line of defense here that the bears have is this 82, 82.20 level. And the problem with that is if you're a bear, okay, we are closed. This is the highest close in this whole formation, right? Everybody see that, right? This is the high here in the last into supply, 82.19. That, that was the high from September the 10th. We are in uh, October the 1st, and we reclaimed this whole area, the whole distribution, this whole sell-off, and this is the highest close in this whole formation, which is super duper bullish. And if you look at uh, the charts that correlate, right, into the NASDAQ composite, 
you'll see how quickly they really resemble what's going on macro with the ETF. So if you look at Amazon, right? Carbon copy. Amazon reclaimed all levels. Again, this is the highest close in Amazon in the whole formation. Again, two days in a row, it built over the 50-day moving average and today, the highest close. We saw incredible aggressive uh, in the money weekly call buying today. We saw crazy hardcore deep out of the money calls for next week, the 3350s, the 3400s. So again, you could see the theme playing out here, right? You could definitely, definitely see the theme uh, that's definitely playing out here, super bullish. We saw names like Zoom, right? That had this really big move up, okay? Hit supply, came back in, was hugging, you know, and holding on to the rising 10 day moving average like G.I. Joe and the Kung Fu Grip, right? They couldn't confirm lower. You can see this triple bottom here. And today it closed right above the five-day moving average. Again, the five-day is the, is the absolute uh, shortest-term bias that you could possibly have, at least for me. So this is super bullish. And if you go through your charts tonight, guys, usually I would tell, uh, and I really, I really suggest, especially new traders, look at a lot of charts. You'll see, you know, it's very, very important to chart tonight. If you trade beta, tonight is almost like your day off of not charting, you don't need to be very creative tonight, okay? There's only 10 to what, 10, 15 of these stocks. You don't need to be very creative. If you look at these names, we'll go one by one. Amazon oversupply looks absolutely great. ZM that we just talked about, reclaim the five day moving average looks absolutely great. Facebook, again, second day in a row, first close above supply looks absolutely great, right? You get the, you know, you get the picture, right? Apple, again, second close above supply looks absolutely great. All it needs to do is reclaim this area right here, this, you know, this area right here, you know, 18, 18 and a half, 19 area, and you're going, you know, you're going into the 20s, a lot of call buying uh, coming in very, very uh, aggressively there as well. Um, Roku broke out today. Again, you know, we'll talk about the individual pivots in a second. Uh, Roku broke out today. You can see 52-week highs on deck. So today is one of those scenarios that, again, all you need to do is concentrate on the five names, right? The five names that you want to trade tomorrow. I promise you, they're not going to give you any head fakes. If they start confirming uh, legitimate levels macro, we're probably going to have a pretty good, you know, very aggressive rally. Um, Fridays, again, there's speculation Fridays because of expiration on the weekly uh, options. So that's going to add fuel to the fire. So unless something crazy comes out, and that's a big, big matzo ball hanging over everybody's head, again, uh, at any given time, you know, if they come out with news that no stimulus or, uh, agreement has been reached, there is, of course, a shot that we gap down tomorrow. The problem with that is for the bears, the market already has screamed at you, right? It, it, they're telling you loud and clear that you couldn't get us down at two o'clock in the afternoon. If we do get a gap up tomorrow, if we do get a gap down tomorrow, it's going, it's going to be a gift. I'm telling you right now, if we get a gap down tomorrow, it will be a gift. All we need to do is wait for those confirmation channels to line up at 10 o'clock. And once they confirm, there's gonna be a lot of trades uh, going red to green tomorrow and, and approaching uh, today's macro confirmation prices. So again, if you are, uh, if you are, for whatever reason, uh, sell bias going into tomorrow, just understand if they gap down the future and you sell into weakness tomorrow, just again, you don't need to listen to me, but if that's the case and they start lining up these channels back to, to the upside on the 10 o'clock channel, you can have a, a really, really uh, aggressive, uh, aggressive Friday and not in a good way. So okay, again, we're kind of bullish, right? We're kind of bullish going into tomorrow's session. So uh, let's talk about today's session again. Uh, pretty aggressive stuff here. Uh, we talked about DOCU for three, four days. Uh, that finally broke out today. Uh, Amazon, again, incredibly strong. And again, this is basically what we, we did the whole day here. So Amazon, big upgrade today. Uh, I forgot who it was. It was so, such a long time ago. Uh, it needs to reclaim 32.14. It, it did that on the close. We actually had a sneaky pivot uh, back uh, in the afternoon. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, Alibaba, one hit wonder, never got close. Uh, to the 297.50 level. They actually just sold the damn thing uh, right away. So this was definitely my first trade of the day. We, we talked about DocU uh, for you know three, four days. Again, COVID is starting to spike uh, along with uh, ZM and Peloton that's been absolutely on fire. Uh, DocU, again, a pure play of any potential. And again, I, I hope it doesn't happen, but any potential kind of stay at home uh, cycle that's a, that could potentially hit. So here is DocU. 
Um, beautiful trade. I mean, really, really beautiful trade. We talked about this whole channel here for about four or five days. It finally took out that 219 level, traded all the way up to 224. I like it higher. I, I think it goes higher tomorrow. Uh, if, it, if it starts rebuilding levels uh, and confirming today's levels, you, you could see a move into the 230s tomorrow. So that looks really, really good. Uh, Roku, just an absolute monster. 194 needs to build. Here is Roku. Uh, I caught a piece of Roku also today. Um, here was Roku. Took out that 94, which is the pre, which is the high from yesterday. And now you can see it's literally uh, a stone throws away from the 200, 201 level uh, confirmation breakout from last week. You know, traded up to the 200 level. So that looks. Uh, really, really good as well for tomorrow. Uh, Boeing, even Boeing, my God, what, what, you know, what, 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 what's the holiday? Even Boeing uh, had a move. So 171 needs to build. Again, rejected its supply yesterday. Here was Boeing. Again, not a huge move on Boeing, but again, how big of a move do you want on Boeing? And it's Boeing, for God's sake, right? It's like the, it's like the redheaded stepchild. Okay, does anybody even take Boeing seriously anymore? And again, I say that in the nicest way. I know a lot of people are very sensitive. I don't want to talk bad about your stock. I know, I know. Anyway, 71, uh, traded up to almost 73. Again, a pivot is a pivot is a pivot. Uh, this is a really, uh, again, these are pretty defined levels here. Uh, the reason 482 to the upside, 461 to the downside, that was the macro ranges. That's the whole point of uh, trading pivots. You don't care which side it triggers, okay? It's all about uh, the, the measured potential. Uh, 482 upside, and that was the whole point. And that was the whole point of why we like it for tomorrow. Uh, here is the 482. That's the five-day moving average, and it closed uh, right over the 482 level. So we like it, right? We definitely like it for tomorrow. And if this thing gets starts getting some early uh, aggressive call buying, like we know what Zoom does, could be pretty good. So let's definitely keep an eye on Zoom for tomorrow. Uh, overstock was insane. I mean, absolutely big move here. Uh, overstock, 77 needs to build. Again, thinner trader, tear down in size. Uh, we saw today as much as they were going out for the 90 calls, right? Uh, so here's the 77, right? It took out this whole channel here. It took out the 77 uh, and traded all the way up to 84 into the 50-day supply. So again, uh, Overstock might get another run if it starts confirming uh, today's price action. So that looks really, really good. Uh, Square, uh, not a big move yet. Yet, let's say that yet. Again, it's very, very close to breaking out. Uh, 167.75, 168 needs to build. Uh, I think Square has a sh legitimate shot, right? Closed at 68.5. But I think it has a legitimate shot uh, at 52-week highs tomorrow. Again, let's keep an eye early for uh, aggressive option flow. Uh, CRM rested, uh, rested. I'm still watching this level for tomorrow. I never got there. Uh, never even got close to there. So Docu, big move. Boeing, like again, take on the way up. Uh, overstock, again, 79 on deck. Hell, 84 on deck. Uh, Overstock 81 on deck. Uh, so here, here is the sneaky pivot uh, this afternoon. Again, really, really aggressive uh, call buyers uh, came in on Amazon. 3,200 needs to build. So here was Amazon, right? So here was the Amazon pivot at 3,200. It was right over here. So it, takes out, it took out the 3,200 and slowly started waking back up. It confirmed the 3215 that we talked about pre-market, and it closed obviously in the highest formation. So again, a lot of call buying. Uh, hopefully, it continues into tomorrow. Uh, Tesla, you know, pretty good move here. 439, uh, 439, 439, 50 needs to build. Again, it's Tesla, right? It takes out channels, and Tesla's going to do what Tesla's going to do. So it took out, uh, it took out the 439. Again, I apologize. It feels like I say that once a night on these updates. But again, here's the 439 right here. Here's the 439, the sneaky pivot. It took out 439, took out this whole range here, 443, and closed uh, right at the high of the day, almost at 450. So big move there. Again, you got the whole deliveries thing going on in the next 24 hours or whatever it is. So again, be conscious of that if you are trading it uh, tomorrow. Uh, so Tesla was really good as well. FSLY, I really like this thing for tomorrow. Uh, Docu, 24 pushing. So again, I would love to see, okay, I would absolutely love to see in a weird way, I would really love to see kind of a mild open tomorrow. I would love to even see a down open tomorrow because again, if we can trap early shorts tomorrow, early aggressive shorts on news that we already know about from yesterday, news that we already digested and pushed aside today, it will be the, exactly the same news if they can't come up 
with common ground on a stimulus package, we'll know it's the third day in a row with the same news. So if we do get a gap up based on we're already confirming channels for three days in a row in the queues, I'm telling you, it will be a gift. Guys, have a great night, everybody. Have an awesome trading Friday. With God's help, I'll see you all uh, tomorrow. Take care.